Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another game of the League of Legends. Today we're playing ADC Vayne upon popular request because we actually got two votes, one for Jinx and one for Vayne and I actually have more Jinx, Vayne, Jinx video than Vayne video so I assume that it'd probably be better to do Vayne. And since last time I used a skin for Vayne, I'm going to use her classic skin since it is pretty nice. I really do actually like it. And I'll let's go over the teams before we get into this. Top of Nectin, Jungle Lease, Mid Echo, ADC Vayne, and Support Scion. A little weird to support. I wonder if he's going to do some tactics that are known to be on Scion, as such as going for Grump and then coming suit, dying and using his passive and then teleporting back. It doesn't seem like that's the case. Or is it? And on the enemy team, they have Top Vi, I'm guessing Mid Zerath. Twitch ADC support Echo just because he has the exhaust, but it's hard to tell. It could be either Zerath or Echo, and then Jungle Fiddlesticks. So I'm guessing the Elise is going to get a, want a leash for the um, Grump. So Elise can be a really good jungler if you get off those early ganks, which she is really phenomenal at because she has a really good ganking too. Which is her E in both human form and spider form. Her spider form E closes the distance while her human form E stuns the opponent. So it's actually pretty good on getting ganks off. Let's see. They're actually both doing fairly well. I wonder if we're going to see a kill here. Yep, we do. Good job, Renekton. Good job, Renekton. You got to make sure you know what you're doing. And he was pretty confident in his thing. And I, I guess, you know, Vidant had Ignite, but she didn't use it. Well, if she did use it, she might have gotten a kill in return. So we're going to auto-attack it a few times. Get our passive silver bullets off on it. And then back off so the Elise can go ahead and get it. Back off just as she asked. And yep, I was right. It was support Echo, which will be a bit weird. Considering Echo is actually a pretty... Dicey Champion. I wonder if he's going to be Support Echo or Kill Lane Echo. That's the only real problem I see there. Because, uh, yeah, like there, you see, if we if we didn't dodge that, that stun could have been so massive against us. And it does seem like he's going for a Support build simply because he does have a Support item. I guess that's to kind of because he's not going to be able to get a lot of gold in this lane. So he's going to have to build a gold-efficient build. So let's see. So right now they're not focusing this minion, so I'll be able to kind of attack it without missing it. Though I did miss another minion, and I did miss that one. So yeah, like I said, we're going to definitely take a lot of damage. Ah, uh, dang it. Since they got level 2 early, that was completely and utterly wrecking me. So that's the problem. Like, he definitely does a lot of damage with his passive, even without any damage of his own. So that's going to be a bit troublesome. So I'm going to buy two health potions and see if I can get back to lane fairly quickly. I'm going to have to really focus on just farming and staying out of the range, so it's going to mostly be me <coughs> farming under Tau, which is going to be really difficult. But if I can survive the lane, I should be fairly well off, simply because surviving the lane is only really the only difficult part as Vayne, because she has a very weak early game. And that's kind of what you got to focus on, and that's what they did. They focused on how weak I am Oli, so they decided to go for all, real Oli aggression. The problem with Echo is you can't see that barrier to the last second. So, okay, so we might be able to get a return kill on Echo. Okay, wait, I'm level 1. I can't really fight this. I was thinking maybe I was a little bit stronger than I was. So, sadly, I just took a lot of damage for no reason. Simply because I believed I might have been a bit stronger than I thought I was. So that that went pretty poorly guys, so I'm gonna have to focus on farming and Try not to get greedy as heck right guys So let's see as long as I don't get any real Damage on me. I should be fine. I have to focus on farming underneath the tower Which is gonna be a bit of a pain considering everything that's going on. I can't really do much at all. I'm still only level 2 Okay, so he might be dead, but with his passive it might be a turning point just there because they are very low. So they definitely, I do have some leeway now, but I can't get stunned or anything at this point. So I think safe farming would probably be my best bet, simply because anything else is just a little bit dangerous. Yeah, just a bit dangerous. Okay, he's dead, and we should be able to get him. So I would say that, and all in all, that was a really good job. 
He used his passive to his advantage to continue getting damage off. And they went a little too ham for him, in my opinion, especially with how low they were. I mean, we caught out this Twitch, and I'm, at that point, Echo should have just left. Simply because I don't think there was anything he could really have done at that point. So I'm going to try my best to get some free farm. I probably should have gotten a ward. I was debating it to, uh, to an extent. And now that he actually came prepared with teleport, we're going to be able to get a lot of damage off on this tower. Which is really nice. But I'm going to like focus on getting some minions still. Because of course I still need to focus on that. Because no matter what, objectives are really important, but towers aren't the best to really go for early, simply because even though it does le relieve a lot of pressure on the lane, it puts a lot of pressure for on your opponents to do much better. It's sometimes just really kind of difficult to pull off, and it's just best to kind of like not go too ham for anything, I guess you might say. So hopefully, you know, we need a ward there, simply because... We do not, we do, we want to be able to have some vision of them coming in. Especially because they are definitely strong and with a gank from their jungler that will be devastating in my opinion. I'm just a little afraid of where this is coming from. Oh wow. Yeah, I mean that's not enough. I mean since he's not building damage he doesn't have the damage. I mean if I could really make some outplays here I'd be willing to fight the Twitch. But at this point I'm, I'm not too sure I'd be able to make those outplays. I mean, I could have tumbled perhaps to the side and tried to stun the Twitch into the wall. That would have done quite a bit. And Echo does have a bit of poke, so I'm going to dodge that, or at least try to, by tumbling out of the way. But I was hoping on the way back it wouldn't hit me again. Yep. So in the end, you know, Echo's passive is similar to what I would consider being like a vain passive. Simply because it does have that kind of effect that upon three hits of some sort, it will deal bonus damage, which is very strong, as you guys can see. That extra bit of damage is just can completely destroy you. So let's see if I can't just jump out of the way here. They did use his E, and that's definitely going to be a bit problematic. But I'm gonna, And I'm going to have to stay back because of it, but I can definitely get... I have a lot of gold, so especially because I did get those kills on them. All thanks to the Scion being right awesome. BRB care. Because we definitely want the Scion to not die. And we're going to start off. I, I mean, sure, you could get the BF sword, but I feel like Bill's Water is much better because, I mean, it's very weak. With a very weak early game like Vayne does have, it's best to have that sort of kind of defensive play where I can just kind of farm and regain my health as much as I po possible. I'm not really going to go too much for all your players unless I see it really strong. Like what I saw with the last time when we killed both the Echo and the Twitch, I saw that he had like a great round of CC and that at that point it would be really, really foolish not to go for it. So I'm like, okay. That was like, the thing is you got to like weigh the options in my opinion. And I feel like that we weighed it pretty nicely. Yeah, we did get a little, let's see, so we got to focus on trying not to completely mess things up in this lane, because we are in a really good place right now. So I did get a ward, so I could put a ward for the enemy fiddlesticks, because once he reaches level six, he, level 6, he will become a monster. Just because his ultimate, if he gets it off, is just going to destroy us. So now they're both level 6, I'm the only one who hasn't really reached level 6 in this lane. Which is a bit problematic, but overall I feel like it isn't too big of a deal. Simply because my a passive isn't like super necessary for me to trade. It's like I said, I've said this just recently, but Vayne is auto attack dependent. And I said this on my last, on one of my last Vayne game. Because I was definitely talking about how she was dependent on that auto attack. So yeah, I don't think we'll be able to really fight this too well. Okay, never mind. Let's just get off a bit of damage, you know? Okay, I took an auto for that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that was really bad on me. I should have suspected that a bit. I mean, I went a little too ham there, seeing as I'm like, okay, if I just kind of go up and just poke him with that last auto attack, I really, you need to pay attention to Echo. Let's see, our Echo still has his ultimate. If you look at his clone, you have to pay attention to where that is, because... He has the ability to kind of just go to where that was a moment ago, and that really can destroy you if you're not paying attention to it. As you guys saw there, a perfect example. 
Okay, so at least I would say she's probably just back off. He's on the tower. She did a. It was a good try, but he is a very mobile champion. And as a support, he should definitely not be doing a lot of damage, even though he did pretty much destroy a snap trade. And I'd say his biggest damage problem would be in his passive. So if you can prevent those three auto, three auto attacks or spell damages, for the most part, you should be pretty well off kiting him. But the thing is, he's an assassin and. Cutting him will not be easy because he does have two dashes if you play it correctly. So let's see. We're a little behind on farm, of course. So let's see if we can't just pick that up again. And he uses Pat his E to kind of expunge us. Okay, now we're back to being ahead. We have a ward here, so let's see if we can't put our other ward over here for that extra bit of vision. And. Um, the Elise went for a little bit of a risky play because she did get very low and any real op opposition from any of the opponents could have easily lost us to Dragon, but she kind of understood where the enemies were on the map and kind of made a great deal of a, go a really good decision there. And apparently the whole enemy team is at bottom. Okay, so there's a good chance I'm dead. Yep. Don't know why the whole enemy team's here, sadly enough. And I don't know why they're continuing to dive, because Vayne's not in a great... P okay, I'd say that was good on them. They had the whole team there to kind of completely destroy me. Sadly enough, th I didn't really expect that. But I guess since Renekton is completely bulldozing the top lane, he, the Elise thought... Oh, I mean, the Va thought she could go ahead and just leave. And it's good... We'll still get some damage off on the, like, on the Echo. And, okay, nope. The minions kind of destro destroyed any hopes of us getting that. And I'd say next item to get, uh, I'm trying to think. So, top lane is just wrecking. We're 3-3. Three and three, So, overall, I think bot lane is pretty even off. And we're wasting a lot of time here. So, I'm just going to leave it at that. Let's see. Pickaxe. What can I get from that build? There's plenty of things I could go for an Infinity Edge, but... That might be the n no. I was trying to remember what I got l the last game, which I thought was pretty nice. I want to get the Phantom Dancer because it is going to boost my art attacks quite a bit, and they're going to take bot to it, so that's good. So I can't quite get. I could have gotten something, I guess, on my back, but now when next on my back, I'm definitely going to have a little bit more of it, more of a selection, and it's going to be a little bit more of a boost into my power. So let's see, I was hoping maybe we, okay, let's see if we can't gank the Twitch with the Elise's help. Because that would be pl plenty nice. Ah, oh, dang. So he backed off, okay, now, there. Dang. Okay, now Vi's here. Okay, I'm probably dead. So I didn't really suspect that the Vi was coming from behind, so that was good reaction time on her. But I mean, you guys must understand, <laughs> who who expected the Vi there? But it seems like, you know, the Echo's cleaning up quite nicely, that's pretty nice. And sadly, you know, I'm guessing they're probably both get dead. So Xerath, who was falling behind a bit as he just got two kills. So that was a poor choice on our part, I guess, simply because... After the Twitch went inv invisible, he had a certain kind of a frame of invincibility as we couldn't really attack him. And that's kind of what really threw a wrench in our plan. Hopefully, okay, yeah, Sign did trade with the support, so that's good. So right now, Twitch is ahead in farm and most else. So we're going to have to really pull our act together because Twitch is really tricky, to as, especially as a Vayne, simply because... There's a good deal that you can't do against him simply because he has that stealth and that ability to hide from you. I hope they didn't put a ward here recently. Twitch, they have a turret. We, don't, we have their turret, so that's good. Yeah, we also had mid turret. We might have been able to chase that a bit more, but overall, I'd say as a team, we're winning. We have so many objectives that it doesn't really matter. And I kind of just... Uh, eat him for no reason I guess you know I pushed him into the tower range I wasn't gonna get him and I was gonna leave him to it so I mean I he's just trying to taunt me I guess 
which I do not appreciate in the slightest, in case you guys are wondering. Okay, so Twitch could be going in a multiple different directions, but it, I would suspect that maybe he would turn, yeah, I was going to say he was either going to go towards Alain or towards the Dragon buff to see if he can sneak out, and he did. So, we couldn't really predict it. It might have been better if you went through this pinked area. Ha ha, it was a free back. And there's Fiddlesticks, for some reason. What? Oh, that fear just completely wrecked me. I didn't expect him to continue being in that bush. Especially because, you know, he wasn't there when you walked into the bush. I don't know, I guess the way his ult walked, it kind of made him somewhat invisible for a second. And I feel their Echo might be able to take ours out, but I feel in general, if we our team walked a bit more together, it would have been easier. But the Echo kind of abandoned... I mean, the Elise kind of abandoned our Echo. I don't think... I think it's because she was afraid, but she kind of had to remember that he was a support and wasn't going to be as strong. And now Twitch is kind of on a bigger role than before, so we should focus on farming, especially since we've been trying to make a lot of plays, even though I've been kind of saying that Vayne is a weak early game. Was Vi game. I guess she's trying to say that she's not doing too well because she's not comfortable with Vi. But I'm going to make another kind of Stonewall quote. Stonewall once said, like, if you know a character that is similar to Vi, there's no excuse for losing because you don't know how to play Vi. Simply meaning that she can't, if you know, like, someone who plays similar to Vi in her play style and you can play them well, if you play like that, you should have a decent kind of, like, time with Vi. So. We're definitely winning in a lot of ways, so sadly, I liked my other game a bit better because I was doing a bit more on my own. I mean, I still do a lot of damage, but the problem is I'm definitely making quite a bit of, you know, mistakes. And I'm not saying I didn't make mistakes in the other game, but I could have more. they were more easily to point out and more like less situational that easy things that you could guys could could have could have learned from but our team got really really like oh we can't win we might as well just give up and surrender and they kept fighting with each other we were actually playing with our friends perfect left foot and dr strange but they really got in total they were just not that great because they just got really really pessimistic i guess okay so it seems cyan is teleporting in that's good i'd say we should could probably get the turret I'm just afraid of the Echo, wherever that shield may be. But, you know, it's pretty good. We did get them out. And I'm going to say, I don't know why they're connecting back. I'll show you it's low, and he doesn't have his ultimate. I guess that's why he's not being too overconfident. But I feel like there's some overconfidence kind of warranted. Because he's doing such a great job. But I need to stay away from the Vi. The thing is, she can easily shut me down. So I kind of got to focus on not getting shut down, you know? So I'm going to go over to the Elise, maybe help her clear it faster and make sure there are no wards. Because the last thing we want is for the enemy team to steal this. Ah, uh, yeah, like that. Yep, and they go straight for the Elise, sadly. Hopefully, you know, we could save for life. No, they barely got out. And I'm going to activate my ultimate, which is going to give me invisibility. What? I thought my ult activated. I guess it didn't, which definitely put her into my plans, but I didn't die there, so that's at least half decent. But I was kind of, my ult gives me a little bit of move speed, but I thought I activated my ult and then used my Q, because that would have given me momentarily invisibility, and that would have been pretty well off of me. Uh, so close, guys. I might just barely wait for it. Oop, boop, doo -doo -doo. So, basically, I did a lot of things wrong there, especially technical mistakes, because Va um, Vayne is a pretty technical champion. If I she doesn't, like, her, she'll cue wherever your mouse, to wherever your mouse cursor is, meaning it's not a point and click kill shot. So you gotta kinda make sure you wanna tumble in the direction that you're tumbling. Like, I was running away from the Twitch, and I had my mouse over here, and there's a wall here, so I tumbled into the wall. So Vayne is not always an easy support at uh, ADC to play. Sorry, guys, my bad. Okay, and Va... Vi, I think that was Vi, yeah, Vi is backing off of the Echo, knowing just respecting the abilities of the, cr cr like, area effect, I don't know what it's called exactly, that his W, which is that little cr effect, so let's just go off and do a bit more damage, kind of try to kite the Raptor buff, see, since we're constantly moving a bit, you see, like, the other minions, though, they're getting off less 
attacks up often, which is just good for us. I think that just kind of gives us a little time to kind of use our life steal to our own advantage. And it seems like they're going on the Echo. Hopefully Echo does not die here. Ah, oh, that was really bad. He used his ultimate. I thought we had killed him, and then he just did a lot of damage on his own. So it seems like their Echo actually got the support item and just went for full AP. See if she has a... Okay, she does have a lot more mobility in that form. And she's probably going to die to the Fiddlesticks if she fights him. So she should not hesitate in leaving. So let's see. I'm guessing you dislike him. I want to win so bad. I guess because Zareth has been having a hard game from the very beginning. He wants to win. And now I'm going to get something that's crit. I want to get some crit because that is definitely a good item to get when you have auto attacks. So I might just go for some straight crit here and build into the Yoma's Ghost Blade because that will definitely give me a decent amount of damage. I don't know why. She's kind of like going half fight, half not. But, you know, she did take him out in the end, so that's pretty good. She stunned him. I think he started channeling his ult, and they're surrendering. So, sadly, guys, this wasn't a good game, and I would have preferred if our team kind of pulled ourselves together and we kind of went and did the other game because you could have learned a bit more from that. But I don't think I have too... I don't want to put it out too late, and I don't have... And I'm kind of being... Well, school is still technically going on, so I still have a sort of curfew, I guess you might say, by the times I want to get the videos out. So let's go quick over this game, kind of give you some kind of valuable learning experience from it. Vayne has a weak early game, so I wouldn't go for early aggression. I mean, if there is a chance for early aggression that you see, like, it's too good not to take, such as when we could take out the two, take out the whole bot lane, and you kind of got to pay attention to who on your enemy team is strong and what they're building, because I kind of underestimated the Echo at that last point when he killed me, because I'm like, oh, he's support. I should be able to take him out, and I didn't. Pay attention to what his, his, his ultimate, like, four second ago clone was. So, I was I was caught off guard and I got a lot of damage put on me. And in terms, like, Twitch is not a favorable matchup. I mean, he does have somewhat of a weak goal of the game himself. Because he does lack that mobility except for his Q and his invisibility, which gives him a bit of a movement speed, but it's not a lot. And he also has that, like... But when he gets rolling, he really gets rolling. And he almost, like, he almost kind of trumps fame with that invisibility because... Even though you have your, you he has it on his Q and it's a longer lasting than your ultimate. While your ult does have some bonus stats, I feel overall like trading with the Twitch is gonna be very hard unless you kind of have a good picture where he was and you're able to kind of like stun him and do damage before he can kind of do damage to you. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and if so, remember to like, subscribe, and vote in the straw poll for the next game's champion, which will be a mid champion. So it's kind of going in a full circle now, and that will. I'll hopefully see you guys next time on the League of Legends.